Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 17. Question one is a basic arithmetic question that looks at the distributive property. And it says, uh, solve the following, one third multiplied by seven plus one third multiplied by 11. Okay, so most of us would look at this and kind of groan, right? Because what's one third of seven? Um, kind of a little bit challenging to do in your head. So here, um, what you have to remember is that sometimes in the GED, they will give you a, um, an equation in looking like this or looking like this, multiplied out. So the first instance is called a, in a factored form, and the second type of equation is in a distributed form. So if we go back to our equation, one third multiplied by seven plus one third multiplied by 11, this is in a distributed form, okay? So the equation on, on the right. So notice that you have one third here and one third here. So all you have to do is rewrite this equation in a factored form. So we would say one third plus, excuse me, multiplied by seven plus 11. That would give us one third multiplied by 18. And you can see how easy it is to solve it now, right? What is 18 divided by three or multiplied by one third? Six. Okay, so remember these two little um, equations of how you could have either um, equations in a factored form or a distributed form, because this is gonna save you a ton of time. So our correct answer would be A. Question two in applied arithmetic looks at ratios and proportions. A map uses a scale in which one inch is equal to 175 miles. You have to drive between city A and city B, which are three inches apart on the map. Excuse me. Uh, what distance in miles do you have to drive? And then it gives you several uh, distances. All right, so what you do here is the following. So they're telling us that on the map, one inch is equivalent to 175 miles. You can also write this as a ratio, right? So one to 175, or you could write it as a fraction like that. Okay, so what you want to do now is you want to take uh, that fraction, one inch divided by 175 miles, and set up uh, an equivalent ratio. Okay, so if we said that one inch is equal to 175 miles, what would three inches be equivalent to, right? So you would write your equation like this. And now it's going to be very easy for you to find x because all you have to do is multiply across like that in a diagonal and then that way. So you end up with X is equal to 525 miles, okay? So this is a really common problem. I see these uh, a lot in the geometry as well uh, when they talk about, you know, uh, a building, you know, being a shadow of like five inches or whatever. Um, so this is a really kind of, uh, important concept for you to, to understand and remember. All right, so answer C would be the correct one. All right, so uh, question three is an algebra problem looking at simultaneous equations. So it tells you if 5x plus 3y is equal to 40 and 2x plus 7y is equal to 25, what is the value of y? All right, so here what you have to do um, we're going to use something which is called the linear combination method. Okay, so the first thing you do is you stack your equations like that. Step two would be to get one of the coefficients uh, to be the same. So in this case, because they're asking us for y, what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, the variable of x in both equations to be the same. So how do we get 5x and 2x to be the same? Well, in the first case, we would multiply everything by 2. And in the second equation, we would multiply everything by 5. The reason we're doing this is because if we now multiply out, we end up with 10x in the top and 10x in the bottom. Okay? Um, and remember, you have to multiply all the other numbers out. All right, so why are we doing this? 
Well, because now if we subtract these two equations from each other, we can go ahead and get rid of that 10x. And now our life is going to be much, much simpler. Because if we subtract 6 minus 15y, that would give us 9y. And 80 minus 125 is minus 45. And now you can see how simple it is for you to solve this problem. All you do is divide both sides by 9, by negative 9, and that gives you 5. So your correct answer would be D. All right, so the next question is also an algebra problem, and it's a translation problem. Sometimes they give you these really kind of long-winded problems, and you don't know where they're going, you know, but um, all you have to do is kind of like translate it into mathematical language. All right, so a car crashes against uh, the tree, a tree, sorry, uh, sending it skidding on the road. The square of the velocity of the tree is three times the product of the acceleration by the distance traveled. If the tree is traveling at an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared for 23 meters, what is the velocity in meters per second? Okay, so the first thing I put, you know, I wrote this problem um, on purpose because I want to stress you a little bit so that when you get to the exam and you find problems that you're not familiar with, um, I want you to already have had the uh, experience of feeling stressed. But mostly, I want you to have the experience of, despite feeling stressed, being able to figure it out even when you haven't got a clue what they're asking you. Okay? All right. So let's take it step by step. So what they're telling us is that a car crashes against a tree, right? And then it sends that tree skidding on the road. And what the question wants is to know how fast that tree is moving. Okay, so that's the premise of the problem. So they tell us in the problem, the square of the velocity of the tree is, okay, so let's take that part first. So the square of the velocity, so velocity squared, is or is equal to, okay? And then it tells us uh, three times, so three, the product of the acceleration. So the product means that you're multiplying, all right? So multiplied by the acceleration, and then it says by the distance traveled. So by also means multiplication. So you multiply distance. And there you have it. That's your equation. And now, it's going to be very easy for you to solve this equation because in the problem, they're giving you the acceleration, which is 5, and the distance traveled, which is 23 meters. All right? So all you have to do is multiply all those numbers out. It gives you 230. But uh, remember that on the left side, you have velocity squared. So to get rid of that squared, um, what you would have to do is take the square root. Okay, so you take the square root of velocity and you take the square root of 230. That gives you a velocity of 15.16 meters per second squared, which would be answer B. Okay, so hopefully, folks, um, you saw that when you have a problem like this where you're like, what are they asking me? For? You know, don't panic. Just go step by step. And it's all about translating it from English to a mathematical language. Okay, so just imagine you're in a foreign country trying to figure things out. And most important, don't panic, stay calm and positive and know that you are going to figure it out. All right, so our last question today is a geometry problem. And they're telling us that a rectangular playground has an area of 275 squared feet. If the length of the garden is 25 feet, what is the width? All right, so, um, sorry, I revealed all the answers there. Okay, so again, um, usually most formulas, especially for geometry, are provided for you, but just make sure you have an idea of where they are, um, what they mean. Okay, so when we look at the area of a rectangle, the area is equal to the width multiplied by the length. Okay, so here they give us the area, which is 250, um, and they give us the length, which is 25. And so you just plug those numbers in, and then you would solve for the width, um, which gives you a total of 11. 
All right, folks. Well, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.